Thank you, uh, Ms. Harris. It's a pleasure to see you in the chair. And can I, uh, I congratulate the member for Tottenham for securing the debate. It's always good to have some of these uh, debates uh, before we have recess. And I hope, if I don't get the opportunity, to wish all uh, honourable members uh, and uh, the clerks and everyone else uh, a very good Easter uh, when it comes. Um, Ms. Harris, when you mention the emergency services, most pe p people would picture a vehicle used to protect people or save lives, say an ambulance, a police car or a fire engine. That's what people see on a daily basis in urban communities like mine. So they might not immediately think of that fourth essential vehicle, the lifeboat. The Glasgow South West constituency is on the south bank of the Clyde and travelling downstream from it we have the lifeboat stations of Helensborough in the Firth of Clyde, then others at Largs and Troon on the Clyde coast. People from Glasgow South West have been going down the water for most of the time the RNLI has existed and many will have benefited greatly from their rescue service in that time. For those staying in the city and not making that exotic journey to the Costa Clyde, there have often been the temptation to spend time near the River Clyde itself, an activity which can be quite hazardous. And for that reason, the Glasgow Humane Society has long had a base upstream at Glasgow Green, which performs life-saving services in the Clyde and other local waterways. For 40 years, and up until only recently, the Glasgow Humane Society was operated by George Parsonage and then his son, Dr George Parsonage, MBE, who pulled thousands from the Clyde, saving many lives. But the Society has a much longer history than that. The Glasgow Humane Society is the oldest practical life-saving organisation in the world. Having been founded in 1790, Countess Glaswegians have since owed their lives to their officers, volunteers and directors. That society, admittedly, has a remit which is local to the Glasgow area. But looking further afield, the RNLI lifeboats in Scotland have launched 45,853 times, saving 11,878 lives. That means over a quarter of all rescues in Scotland have resulted in a life saved. And looking even further afield to across these islands, a term most appropriate in this context, members will know that the RNLI is reckoned to have saved a total of 146,277 lives. As a proportion of the population, the number of lives saved in Scotland is particularly high. And this not might be a great surprise to those who have crossed the Minch or the Pentland Firth during a Highland Gale or in any other of Scotland's 790 islands in weather which we would call a good day for the washing or a good drying day, Ms Harris. Ms Harris, it's easy as I have done to make light of the dangers of such journeys, but there is a much more serious edge to it. In defining bravery, a common example is of ordinary people running away from burning buildings while firefighters run into them. And so it is with lifeboat crews who choose to launch and enter the tempest where others would be rushing for safe havens. What makes this behaviour even more remarkable is that those carrying out such feats of bravery are volunteers, all 32,000 of them. They don't expect a high salary professional career they do this out of principle and compassion. That compassion is obvious, but let's look as more closely at the principle of who the RNLI would seek to rescue. It's often said half-jokingly that in the United States of America, a hospital or ambulance will first check someone's bank balance before checking their pulse. Fortunately, that's not the current policy in our National Health Service. In a similar vein, Mark Dowie, the RNLI Chief Executive, has said that Right from the get-go, in 1824, we said that the lifeboat service would rescue whoever needed our help, wherever they are, whoever and wherever. That, therefore, includes rescuing migrants in the English Channel because of that humane work. It is disappointing when you have Nigel Farage and others describing the RNLI as a taxi service for illegal migration. Let me make it clear that I and my colleagues utterly and should utterly disassociate ourselves from such views. I'll give way. I'll give way. I think we're going to be referring to the RNLI lifeboat at Dungeness and at Littlestone in my constituency. And there is a strong community support for the excellent work they've done from in 1943, you know, rescuing British servicemen 
uh, at Dunkirk to the work they do today in the channel to keep people safe, whoever they are. Yeah, and he's, he's quite right to mention Dunkirk, as uh, other honourable members have on this de uh, debate. We do, however, should agree with Mark Dowie when he says that the day that the RNLI turns round to the Coast Guard and says, I'm awfully sorry, can you tell me where these people are from, before they respond, then that's the end as far as I'm concerned. And I think that we all should associate ourselves with the Chief Executive's words. It's therefore very heartening that following these smears and attempts to undermine it, the RNLI found itself on course for the highest annual fundraising total in its near 200 year history. Ms Harris, much has changed here over the centuries. Both the smaller Glasgow Humane Society and the larger uh, RNLI have added the roles of being advisory and educational bodies. Progressing from its original purpose in 1824 of aiding ships in distress around the coasts of Britain and Ireland, the RNLI now identifies swimmers, paddle boarders, fishing crews and small boats in the channel as making up the bulk of call-outs today, or as they put it, we are all about lifeboats and we are now about life-saving. We in Scotland have a strong working relationship with the RNLI, who provide joint safety training alongside Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and Police Scotland. We have a drowning prevention strategy, which aims to reduce accidental drowning fatalities by 50% by 2026. And cooperation between the bodies, including RNLI, is vital to achieving this. Unsurprisingly, the Steering Group of Water Safety Scotland consists of Scottish Fire Rescue Service, the Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents, Police Scotland and RNLI. And we in Scotland will take this opportunity to thank the RNLI for the vital public service which they carry out and we wish them well for the future and for the next 200 years.